Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob, how's it going? Welcome to our weekly Top 5 Friday Ski Industry News videos. Believe it or not, Bob and I did not coordinate our matching t-shirts, just happened to turn out this way. It's one of my favorite free t-shirts of all time. Me too, actually. Yep. It's, it's on top of my... I have a stack of free t-shirts yeah. and this one sits near the top of that yeah. stack. It's a good one. Yeah. Good well, job, Lang. Yep. Awesome shirts. Great boots, too. They hurt. <laughs> they're great, great boots. Uh, they may hurt your feet, um, but they're great boots. Uh, so, yeah, I think a pretty quick news week this week. Um, I think we'll probably move through it pretty quickly, and then, uh, Bob, I'll let you get outside and enjoy the beautiful 82-degree weather we've got going right now. Yeah, girls have lacrosse today, so I get to go hang out and watch that. Yeah, sweet. Yep. That'll be fun. Um, all right. So to kick things off, we've got a couple of ski racing news topics. The first one is that the FIS organization is going to vote on a interim president on June 4th. So back in 2019, uh, the current president, Gianfranco Casper, announced that he would be stepping down early. So it's kind of like the U.S. presidency. They get four-year terms. So, without going into details on that, he announced that he would be stepping down in the spring of 2020. Ultimately, that, that got extended to the spring of 2021, pretty much just due to COVID, because it was yeah. like, weird. They didn't want to have to deal with, like, bringing in a new president when, when things were already kind of unknown. Um, so, yeah, now they have a vote, vote scheduled for June 4th to pick an interim president, and that interim presidency would would be about a year so it's basically to fill the remaining year in his term um, and we're not going to go into great detail on each candidate um, we're just going to kind of touch touch and and, and state each candidate um, that being because ski racing.com has done a really really good job of highlighting each of these candidates um, and, and, and pretty in-depth articles about each one yeah. of them so if you're curious about each one of these guys in more detail than we're about to give you, um, head on over to SkiRacing.com. We always leave the links to this stuff in the description of the video so you can find it really quickly. Uh, so, yeah, to run through them real quick, and I'm sure I will kind of butcher some of these names. Uh, Matt Arias. That sounds right. All right, good. Uh, he's the current FIS vice president and the Swedish Olympic Committee president. Um, so... Pretty good credentials there to, to move into a a FIS presidency. Uh, I'm gonna I'm, this one. I, I I really enjoyed this last name, and I, I feel bad that I, I don't know how to pronounce it because we work with this company. <laughs> uh, the current head CEO Johan Eliash is, is what I'm going for. Yeah. Um, so pretty interesting. You know, that's kind of the only one that's coming from like a, a manufacturer background, um, which I think is cool. Uh, and then we have Urs Lehmann, uh, who is the Swiss ski president. And then we have Sarah Lewis, who also has kind of a unique background as uh, serving 26 years as the FIS Secretary General. So a little bit of a different background. Um, it'll be really interesting to see who they pick yeah. and who fills that role. And like we were saying before, like I have no idea what these cred what credentials you would need to to fill this position. It's a very interesting. Yeah way of getting to the top of the, you know, the Federation. All I know is that I missed the application deadline. Yeah. It was either May 5th or 6th. Well, look for it because it's... Not that I was going to apply. It's next year, right? So you can just... Right, yeah, I could apply for yeah. when they vote. So next, around this time next year, they will be voting for a non-interim president right. who will then get a four-year term. So yeah, you're right. Uh, leave a comment if you think I should apply. <laughs> I, br I would bring a unique perspective to the table. Sure. I, you know, change things up. I don't know. Like, I don't know what they exactly do on day to day, but. Yeah, you want a 36 year old ex Nordic ski racer <laughs> slash park skier? Could be cool. Um, so yeah, that'll be interesting and we'll definitely cover, cover the result. Uh, that won't be next, next week that will be the following week yeah you're gonna have to learn your competition exactly exactly um sec second topic of the week another 
Another uh, ski racing topic, another fist topic, and this one's pretty cool. Not that the vote isn't cool, um, but the World Cup speed season may start on the Matterhorn as soon as 2023. I just have this visual of the just tram straight right down. at the top of that huge mountain face and then straight down. Yeah, so a, a cableway is being installed at the base of the Matterhorn. That's not necessarily like brand new news. They've kind of been developing it for a while, but it's giving new life to the concept of hosting a fist downhill race there, and it would be the first speed event of the season. Um, so pretty cool. The new tram system would basically enable them to transport athletes, spectators, yeah. teams, you know, wax techs, all that stuff. The, the support system that these athletes right. carry with them is, is pretty robust. Um, and it would also kind of slip into a nice break in the schedule. So it would be basically the last week of October or the first week of November, um, which is, you know, we, we start the season with, with a slalom. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on the, on the venue, but it would be, yeah, it would fill a nice kind of hole in the schedule right now. So um, they don't have to do Europe, North America, back to Europe. They can stay in yeah. one spot. Yep. Um, and something else that I think is really cool is that the proposed course would start in Switzerland and end in Italy. That is, that's a fun fact. Yeah, I think it's just it's a it's a really cool way. It's a symbolic way, yeah. I think, to start the the fist or not the very start of it, but one of the starting races of the fist season. I think would be yeah very appropriate to kind of cover cover two countries in one. Yeah. Um, so pretty cool. We'll continue to watch that. Uh, I believe I said it already, but yeah, could could be as soon as 2023. So not this season, not the following season, but we might get it in a couple of years, which could be really, really cool. Um, third topic of the week, Altera has established what they're calling Altera Mountain, Co Mountain Company Community Foundation. Um, and this is pretty cool. You know, this is kind of... We've been talking a lot over the last year or two about kind of the, the relationship and the bond between resorts and the towns that they're in yeah. you know it's a it's a constantly evolving dynamic that, that has is has a lot of different moving parts to it yeah sure um is. yeah i mean it's, it's very interesting you know we, we talk about it here in stowe all the time with, yep. with the you know vale resorts purchased stowe what three years ago now yeah i think so and you know it, it's a common topic of conversation here in stowe how how that's affected the town overall the relationship between the town and the resort owners, and it's it feels a little different than when AIG owned Stowe, right? Um, and that was like their only ski area, and it just it just was different. Um, vale, Vale, which we'll touch on at the end, is is doing similar things to this, um, but essentially members of Altera's ownership group contributed a combined 2.6 million dollars to fund grant requests from mountain towns in which they operate. Yeah. So pretty cool. That's a significant amount of money. Yeah, and like I think we've seen here at Stowe, like the Trails Partnership. Yep. Got a grant for trail building from Vale. Yep. So I'd imagine you know a similar Altera resort in the town. That town could ask for that money for upgrading trails or hiking or yeah any I'll, any amount of recreational activities. All sorts of different stuff. In fact, the criteria for grant application is, is pretty darn broad. Yeah. Um, individuals. Public okay. transportation. Yeah. So I individuals, businesses, or organizations, they can all apply. Um, and, and they kind of, they cited those three entities, anyone who has suffered a range of setbacks, including but not limited to the pandemic, natural disasters, crime, illness, or death. So a pretty wide range yeah. of things that you can apply <clears throat> for a grant. Um, and yeah, I, I just think it's really cool. It feels like... Altera is kind of recognizing the importance of that bond between the ski resort and the community, yeah. and it, it's cool to see these big organizations give back. Yep. Um, you know, like you said, Vale has made donations to Stowe Land Trust or Stowe Trails Partnership. Oh, no, I know One they work too closely enough. Um, but, yeah, Vale has done a lot of similar things, um, including a lot of donations to local land trusts. Um, vale has also put a significant amount of resources in supporting mental health institutions, mm -hmm. uh, which is really cool. So, great job, Altera. It'll be interesting to see what comes out of this. Yeah, and you could just write it. It's like a personal GoFundMe page. You could just write, <laughs> apply for a grant for your own money. 
You could. I feel like it'll go to businesses and organizations more than individuals. Sure, obviously they have the right to choose right. who receives these grants. Yeah, I, it's it's hard to imagine like an, an individual applying for a grant. But who knows? Right. It could be a, a property developer or something yeah. like that, and, and maybe that maybe that qualifies as an individual. Or it could tie into the hardship thing and be like, I can't pay off my car. Yeah. You know, because of this X, Y, and Z, this happened to me. So sure, it's, it's all in there. Yeah. I, I mean, it, it's great to see. Um, so yeah, great job, Altera. Um, and then fourth topic of the week. Uh, boy, it's been a while since we talked about this one, but this was a big. This was like breaking news back in October. It was a big avalanche. There was, this was big avalanche, big news. You know, the video got a lot of views, a lot of hits. It was it was shared widely across the ski industry. So back in October, if you remember, two snowboarders in Colorado triggered an avalanche above the I-70 service road, basically like right above the Eisenhower Tunnel, mm. um, which is really cool terrain, yep. but often very avalanche prone. Um, they pretty much did everything right, aside from triggering it in the first place. Uh, they self-reported the incident, and they were initially met with reckless endangerment charges and up to $168,000 in fines. Now, we have, we have some updates on this. Um, they previously had a trial scheduled that was delayed or, or postponed, I think, too, like, to an incomplete jury. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a trial to begin on June 7th, and there is a broad expectation that they will accept a plea deal um, pleading guilty to misdemeanor charges, which would come with 20 to 60 hours of community service instead of $168,000 in fines. I would much rather the 20 to 60 hours in community service. Yeah, and it, you know, I think the initial feedback to that that fine was that it, it was pretty steep. Right. Um, that's like a life-changing amount of money for a couple of snowboarders in Colorado that I'm guessing don't have just uh, $84,000 $84, <laughs> flying around each. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a, a much... I think the, the punishment fits the crime a lot better. Yeah. And, it, yeah, it feels like a win-win for both parties because it still feels like um, it's the Colorado Department of Transportation, I'm pretty sure. It still feels like they're kind of sending sending a pretty serious message to the snow sports community. Right. Like, hey, you got to be careful about right. this stuff, and it's your responsibility. Yeah, don't mess around above the roads. Yeah. I think is, is, is the, teach, the teachable moment from that experience. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> Um, so kind of cool that we're finally this you know it's been almost a year but we're, yeah. we're finally getting some some closure to this and to be honest I had kind of forgotten all about it until this this topic came up and the, and the trial date came up and yeah. the pictures and videos are just wild too. yeah if you just, haven't seen that video um, definitely go watch that video it, it, it's in a link in the written article if you want to go check that out and you haven't seen it before but yeah it's pretty unbelievable yeah and you can tell that, you know, we talked about this at length back in the fall, but you can tell that they were, they're both experienced snowboarders. Yeah. It's not like they were completely over their head or something. They, they ultimately, like, just misjudged the conditions and, and something yeah. happened, which, which can happen pretty quickly in the backcountry. So pretty cool to get closure to that. And then finally, we have our edits of the week. Um, Bob, you and I were kind of sitting watching some of these before we started filming. Uh, first, we have... Julia Tano, The Journey, Episode 1. Julia Tano is an extremely talented park skier, um, first female skier to land a double cork in competition, which Bob and I watched the progression of that. Yeah. Pretty scary. Yeah, double. especially the falls. Yeah, no, yeah, there's, yeah, that one fall straight, yeah. straight to the face. Um, but, yeah, really good. It's about seven and a half minutes long. Um, kind of a mixture of interview footage with, with Juliana or Julia, <laughs> Julia, um, and and the rest is is kind of action yeah. skiing footage. But yeah, incredibly talented skier, and, and she's still extremely relevant. Like you'll see her, you'll see her on podiums next winter for sure. Um, and then our second edit of the week is some first person video drone highlights from Audi Nines, which is just unbelievable. It's like that's like it's not as impressive as the skiing, but it's 
It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's amazing what they can do with these drones. Yeah, you know, you and I were talking before we started filming. It's it's really changed cinematography in, yeah. in the skiing and snowboarding world, um, and it's it's being taken to new levels too as as drone technology improves. You know, as they're putting smaller, better cameras on smaller, faster drones, you're yeah. starting to get some unbelievable footage. You know, at, at first when drones became more popular, um, it kind of initially for for ski cinematography at least it kind of took the place of helicopter rentals and that was the big thing like people were like we don't have to rent a helicopter anymore right. this is a fraction of the price look at all these cool shots we can get and then they were using you know the big big drones with yeah. big cameras on them now you're getting all these like drone racing pilots that are also getting into filming and just the footage that they get is unbelievable yeah, it is pretty cool you keep up with the skiers like you know, probably can go faster than the skiers i'm sure Really cool. So definitely would encourage you to watch both of those. Uh, Bob, you have anything you want to leave our audience with before we log off for the weekend? Not particularly. Looking forward to spending some time outside. Yep. It's going to be very warm here in Vermont this weekend. Hopefully the weather's nice where you are. Um, those of you lucky enough to be on snow, let us know in the comments where you're skiing and, and what the conditions are like. I think Killington's spinning the lifts this weekend. I think this is the last, oh, tomorrow no. is the last day, if I remember right. Um, so any potential skiing in New England is coming to a close pretty rapidly. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, if you're out west and, and you're getting to ski, let us know. Um, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.